Let's take a closer look at the second step of the legendary Quattro development, the VW Iltis. As you know from the first part, the Auto Union developed the new standard vehicle for the German military after the Second World War, the DKW Munga. The Munga was based on the DKW F9, the Beetle competitor which the Auto Union already wanted to offer with all-wheel drive during the Second World War, in 1941. So the Munga proved to be a robust and popular vehicle and helped the new West German Auto Union to survive in these difficult early days with a huge state contract. Auto Union with its brand DKW was struggling a lot in the 1960s because they held on to their two-stroke engines for too long, got bought by Mercedes who gave them their new four-stroke engine, changed the name of the company to Audi and sold it to VW in 1964. By that time, the Munga with its weak two-stroke engine was outdated and the German military was not interested in updating the car and wanted something new. So the Munga production ended in 1968. In the meantime, Germany, France and Italy were working on a joint development project, the Eurojeep, but this project failed. So the German army still used the Munga in the 1970s, but by now it was already 20 years old and they needed a replacement quickly. The quick solution was the VW181, based on the VW Beetle and inspired by the old Kübelwagen and the Australian country buggy. Officially the car was called Kurierwagen instead of Kübelwagen to avoid any connection to the Third Reich but people called it Kübel anyway, which is the German word for a light military vehicle or a bucket. Problem of the 181 was that it only had rear wheel drive and not a lot of ground clearance. So it was just a gap filler and in 1975 the German military asked German car manufacturers if they could build a new standard off-road vehicle for the army within two years. Mercedes said they can do it, but not within two years for an all new vehicle. VW confirmed, said they can do it and forwarded the project to Audi. New CTO at Audi was Ferdinand Piech and he gave the project to Roland Gumpert. No one wanted this project, which involved communication with state departments and the Auto Union's war experienced off-road experts, which developed the Munga before, were not in the company anymore. To save time, the task was to take the Munga and develop it further. That also had the advantage that any equipment of the Munga would fit on the new car as well, which would save money for the military. Weak spots of the Munga were the weak two-stroke engine and no locking diffs. Also, like you heard in the previous part, a requirement for the Munga was to have a maximum of two sticks in the middle of the cockpit, so soldiers don't get confused and get stuck because of using the wrong stick. At the same time, there was a requirement for a shorter off-road gear ratio. So for the Munga, the engineers had to decide if they either keep the stick to decouple the rear axle and the shifter while using a short first gear, or if they use a reduction gear with a separate stick and hence keep the all-wheel drive always active. They decided for the latter. So the Munga always had permanent all-wheel drive without center diff, which was fine on gravel but a problem on tarmac. For the Iltis now they wanted to correct that. So Gumpert's task now was to build the first prototype. He didn't have a clue about the Munga as he never served in the army, but his mechanics told him that a farmer nearby still has one. He went there and for 150 D-Mark he bought the old broken Munga. He brought it to the Audi development workshop where the mechanics refused to work on it, but he could change their mind with two boxes of beer. They fixed the old Munga and Gumpert installed an Audi 80 inline 4 cylinder engine and gearbox inside the car. Now he had an old Munga with 4 stroke engine and front wheel drive. The next step was to change it to all wheel drive. So he drove to the local BMW dealership and bought a prop shaft. The Audi mechanics opened the gearbox at the back which revealed the output shaft and fixed the connector. Again, just like the old DKW F9 idea. For the rear diff he used another Audi 80 gearbox, only left the diff inside, installed it the other way around and connected it with the prop shaft. Now he had an old Munga with 4 stroke engine and permanent all wheel drive. That was the basis for further development. So unlike the Munga, they now decided to have a low ratio off-road gear and to have a connectable all-wheel drive. 
So they took the opposite decision 20 years later. They now developed a simple and clever all-wheel drive system without center diff. The gearbox's output shaft is permanently driving front and rear differential. They decided to decouple the front axle so you can drive the Iltis with rear-wheel drive. And they do this by disconnecting it inside the front diff. So the diff body is constantly spinning, doesn't matter if all-wheel drive is engaged or not. A clutch sleeve is then connecting the right drive shaft with the diff's internals. If this clutch sleeve is not connecting both, the diff's body and internals are just spinning but not driving the front axle, although the left side drive shaft is still connected. If you push the clutch sleeve to the next position, you connect diff internals and drive shafts and hence have all-wheel drive. If you push it one position further, you lock drive shaft, diff body and internals with each other and hence have all-wheel drive and a locked front axle. The lever for this is also enabling the off-road gear on the way, so you can only put the off-road gear in if all-wheel drive is enabled. Since the rear axle is constantly driven, the clutch sleeve in the rear diff has only two positions here, so either you lock the diff or not. That means you can drive the Iltis with rear-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive with locked rear axle, all-wheel drive with open diffs, or all-wheel drive with locked axle, either front or rear or both. And there were lots of detailed improvements. For example, drive shafts could just be taken out without the wheel carrier assembly falling apart like on other cars. And special were also the gearbox seals, which had a little thread shoveling out mud and dirt while driving forward. The German army then reversed through mud for their tests and complained about mud being pushed inside the gearbox. So the Iltis has double gearbox seals. So Audi did the development, but VW decided to own the project. So the car was called VW Iltis, which in the tradition of German military vehicles with animal names means Fitch. In October 1977, right on time, the car was done and the German military ordered 8,800 Iltis. Production started a year later. Meanwhile, because of the failed Euro Jeep project, the French army had the same problem. Their mongas were old too, and they needed replacement. They evaluated 10 different car projects and finally only the Iltis and the Mercedes G were left. Gumbert thought about how he could convince the French army to decide for the Iltis. So he got the idea to compete in the newly founded Paris Dakar Rally, a French event and the hardest rally in the world. He went to Piech and got permission. They took four Iltis. They tuned three of them slightly from 75 to 110 horsepower. And one received an Audi 5-cylinder engine, which they tuned to around 160 horsepower. Like today, it's not allowed to service your car during a stage, but competitors are allowed to help each other. And so Gumpert, the project leader, drove the fourth car himself with an experienced mechanic as his passenger and with 300 kilograms of spare parts. The result was amazing. The Iltis wasn't the fastest car, but it was super reliable and tough. Although pretty much stock, all four Iltis finished the Dakar. The Iltis of Kotulinski won overall, and also second place was an Iltis. Top driver was Rangnotti on the five-cylinder Iltis. Someone loosened his wheel nuts in Park Fermi, which caused him to lose a wheel on the following stage and damaged his suspension. He had to wait for the service truck, which dropped him to place 100, but he could catch up again and finished in 4th overall. Project leader Gumpert, with his 300 kg spare parts on board, also had his fun. He hit a stone and smashed the rear diff and drive shafts. He then removed rear drive and prop shaft and continued with front wheel drive only, until he hit another stone which destroyed the front left drive shaft. He then also removed this one, locked the front diff and drove the remaining 250 kilometers to the finish line only with the front right wheel driving the car. He could still finish in ninth place overall. So it was an impressive display of the Iltis capabilities. Audi did all the work with the Iltis and VW wanted to earn as much money with it as possible. So VW doubled the price for the German army, which made it less attractive. And they cut a deal saying that VW will get this higher price for the military Iltis, but for every Iltis they sell in the civil version, the German state wants a cut. 
earning back what they paid too much. So VW wanted to avoid selling too many ILTs in the civil version and they simply increased the price a lot. Result of that was that a civil ILTs had a price of around 40,000 DMARC, which was three times the price of a Golf. So not a lot of civil ILTs were sold. In the meantime, the Mercedes G-Wagon was finished. Since it was developed from the ground up without restrictions, it was bigger and more comfortable than the Iltis, which was based on the 1950s design of the Munga, which was based on the 1930s design of the DKW F9. Generals liked more comfortable cars to be driven around, and so the German military decided to stop buying the Iltis and change to the Mercedes G-Wagon Wolf for the future. The Iltis production line was then sold to Bombardier in Canada, which produced it from 1983. Canadian forces used the Bombardier Iltis until 2009. And from 1985, the Belgian army bought Iltis parts from Canada and assembled the Iltis in the VW plant in Brussels, the very plant which was just closed recently. Learn all about the development history of the Audi Q8 e-tron, which sealed the fate of this car plant. The Iltis was a super simple and tough off-road car, could win the hardest rally in the world right away and was very important for the future Quattro development at Audi, which we will discover in the next part. See you at the next one and check out my other videos for more.